Hey everybody, so today we're making a laser turret that you can control from your computer. But first, I bet you're wondering how I'm filming this. Um, I actually went out and splurged and bought a professional grade filming rig. <laughs> <laughs> you people think I have money, ha <laughs> All right, first things first, materials. Need a couple of these, three of these, some of those, sprinkle some of that on there, some of these to go with this, one of these to go with one of these, and bada bing. All right, so a couple things about the materials. Uh, about these servos, you can probably get a cheaper uh, plastic servo. I just like the metal gearing inside. Also, if you do, make sure it uh, comes with these shitty uh, head attachments. We're gonna need those for later. These power sources, you can probably find a lot of them uh, just lying around your house. You can use like your phone chargers. A lot of them are five volts. You just have to look on the side um, for output and make sure it says 5V. And if you're having a hard time finding any of these components, I have an Amazon affiliate link in the description. If you purchase through that link, then I get a small kickback, which is nice because... All right, let's start by getting the laser set up. Um, all you need for this is your pen, uh, your hot glue, and your laser diodes. So just plug your hot glue gun in. We're gonna need it for later. All right, so start by just tearing apart your pen. We're gonna be using this for the housing for the laser. So we're gonna take the ink cartridge out. Um, we're gonna take that part out, flip it around, and there's one last like piece here on the end. We're just gonna rip it out. Okay, there we go. All right, that's taken care of. Let's just put that to the side. Okay, so now we're gonna take one of our power sources. Now your power source is almost definitely gonna have a little connector on the end, just cut it off, I already did. So what we're gonna want to do is we're gonna wanna gently cut around the outer insulator and pull, and we're gonna try and expose these two uh, wires inside. All right, now go ahead and just do the exact same thing for your red and black wires. And okay, so you should have something that looks like this. All right, well that's all prepped. Now let's go ahead and take one of our laser diodes and we have to do the exact same thing for these. Usually they have a little bit of metal exposed, but what we wanna do is get uh, quite a bit. And it should look something like that. All right, cool, so now we're just gonna connect up the wires. We're gonna do red to red and black to black, or blue to black, it's all the same. So I would definitely recommend using a soldering gun if you have a soldering gun and know how to use it, but um, for the sake of the people out there who don't own one or you just wanna be speedy, you know, hot glue fixes everything. Okay, so just twist up the wires. All right, cool, and so it should look like this. Uh, now would be a great time to test if your connection's working. So just plug the power source in and you should see, yeah, just a nice little laser. Okay, if your laser is working like mine is, um, we can just get to hot gluing the wires. There's the red one hot glue, just gonna wait for that to dry. Make sure that your, um, Wires are not touching each other or else it'll short it out and you won't get a laser. There we go, it looks awful and we're just gonna wait for it to dry. All right, now that everything's dried up, we're gonna fit the laser diode into the casing we made earlier. So just feed it in there. If you need to cut your hot glue anywhere, feel free to, as long as you just don't uh, snip the wire. All right, cool, there we have it and just hot glue this last part of the laser in there so that it doesn't come loose. Perfect, and there you have it. Plug it in and you got a stupid ass laser pointer. All right, so one last thing before we go into building the actual turret part of the assembly. Uh, take one of these stupid head attachments. It literally does not matter which one. And we're gonna glue it onto this side um, of our laser pointer, preferably right in the middle. Make sure that this part um, that's protruding out is facing outwards. All right, now that everything's dried, you can see how it fits onto your servo so that it can control uh, the laser. 
All right, let's get started on the motor assembly. But right before we do that, uh, don't shine anyone in the eye with this. I don't know why I feel the need to tell you. Uh, they don't tell you not to stab someone when they sell you a kitchen knife. It's just common goddamn knowledge. All right, for the motor assembly, no shit, we need our motors. We need the other two power sources, and we also need something heavy. A can of soup. All right, so for the mechanical construction of the motors, it's gonna be very complicated, so pay close attention. Ah! It's done. And so you should be left with something that looks like this. Um, you can see where the laser fits onto the turret. So the bottom one is for pan and the top one is for tilt. And all we have to do now is wire it up and it should be good to go. All right, the wiring for this is actually mildly complicated, especially if you've never uh, worked with Arduino or anything before. So I threw up a couple of uh, things to help you guys. Here's what the connectors for your servos are gonna look like. You have three wires, and then you should see a schematic on the screen. There's uh, the yellow one is for signal, the red one is for five volts, and the brown is for ground. Okay, let's start out simple. Just take some of our jumper wires and plug them into all of these uh, wire connectors for both servos. And so you should have something that looks along the lines of this. All right, let's just put that to the side and we're gonna grab a couple of our power sources. Just a tip, if you guys have power sources like these, which don't actually have the black and red wires, um, you can just look and the wires that have this little white bar on them, that would be the negative side. All right, so just go ahead and strip off the wires so that you have exposed metal. I already did that, so you guys don't have to watch me go through it. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach jumper wires to each of these to make it breadboard friendly, just so we can fit it on our breadboard. And again, I would recommend soldering these, but if you don't have a soldering iron, hot glue fixes everything. So with the hot glue method, what I'm just doing is bending this jumper wire like that, and then twisting the copper around it. And yeah. You might need to apply a little bit of pressure with like a scissors or a, a um, pliers or something. And then we can just hot glue that. And I'm gonna do this for every single wire. All right, and now you have breadboard friendly power sources. All right, so now that we have all the components we need, it's time to wire them all up. This is by far the most difficult part of this tutorial, so I'll include a schematic in the end in case you guys get lost. So we start with a breadboard. Let's lay down the Arduino, put our soup can in place, and just rest our power sources here. First, let's connect the ground pin of our Arduino to the ground uh, rail of our breadboard. Put that in there, put this in the ground uh, socket. Time to wire up our servos. So let's put the signal wire of one of the servos in um, port 10. Now we're just gonna put the uh, five volt wire of the servo somewhere in the middle of the breadboard. And then we're gonna simply attach the ground uh, pin of the servo to the ground rail of our breadboard. Now we're gonna take our first power source, plug in the uh, ground pin into the ground rail of the breadboard. And since we want to apply power to this servo, we'll plug in the five volts on this rail so that it's applying power to the servo. And now we're all done with one servo, we just have to repeat that process for the second. So I take my servo signal wire, plug it into port 11. I'm gonna take the five volt wire of my servo and plug it in somewhere on the breadboard, pretty much anywhere as long as it's just in the middle. Now I'm gonna take the ground wire of my servo and I'm gonna plug it into the ground rail of my breadboard. Now I'll take my second power source, plug the ground wire into the ground rail of my breadboard. See how this is getting really complicated? Well, messy at least. Then I'm gonna take the five volt wire of my power source and I'm gonna plug it into the same um, rail, uh, this vertical rail as my servo. I know that got a little confusing, so here's a simpler schematic of the design. 
All right, that wraps up the hardware portion of this tutorial. The second part of this tutorial is gonna just be writing software that's needed to control it with your mouse from your computer. It's gonna be a lot of fun, and I'm a lot better at explaining that than I am electrical stuff, so uh, stay tuned. And if you want any more tutorials, I'd be happy to do them. Just leave a comment. Uh, if you want me to show you guys how to do this, then I'd be happy to. I am really liking the whole soup can aesthetic that this thing has. Whee!